he was just a phenomenal basketball player. The New York Knickerbockers select Mark Jackson. He was a New York legend before he was, you know, an NBA star. After a childhood in Brooklyn and college in Queens, the stage was set in the fall of 1987 for Mark Jackson to conquer a third borough after being drafted by the New York Knicks. All he did was set up his teammates and get them high quality shots. And he did it night after night. He just made the game easier for his teammates. And that's what a point guard's supposed to be. You talk to any New York basketball player. Well, I grew up watching the New York Knicks. Their dream. It's a dream come true. To play for the Knicks. And I'm just happy to be here. You can just see the exuberance when they come out of the tunnel and they, they just play with the extra bounce in their step when they're out there on their court. He ushered in an exuberant, visually pleasing style of basketball. All of a sudden, the great summer league game in New York was at the Garden with Mark Jackson running the point. Having him distribute to guys like Patrick Ewing and, and Oakley, even as a rookie, you know, he's he changed that team immediately. Ewing. For the first time in his career, Patrick Ewing had somebody that got him the ball in the right position at the right time. He found Patrick Ewing. You know, it's like we've been playing together for years. But it seemed like once Mark Jackson got on the scene, Ewing became the dominant center in the NBA at that time. Well executed. He had a knack for making real New York basketball fans stand up and cheer. Jackson off the steal. There's Walker. It hadn't been seen since Bernard King. Like Bernard King, Jackson was Brooklyn bred. He was born in the borough of Kings on April 1st, 1965. He was famous on the playgrounds. By the time he was a high school player, you know, the famed Bishop Block on high school. Mark Jackson, hometown young man making good. He had good background. So at an early age, he was instilled with that drive to become better. Having tremendous parents really instilled in me how to accomplish my dreams and to not listen to what anyone said negatively about what I could and could not do. It didn't take long for the name Mark Jackson to spread from Brooklyn to the rest of New York City. Well, I remember uh, reading about him in the papers. Get on it. At the time, there were a lot of good guards in the New York City area. And to stand out in that group, uh, you had to be pretty good. You could see right then that he had a good feel for the game. You know, when you go out recruiting, looking at kids, enjoying the ability to make some unbelievable passes. Sometimes we thought he had eyes in the back of his head. Jackson led Bishop Laughlin to the New York State Championship in his senior year. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. And was tasked with deciding where to play in college. Mark's senior year in high school, we had Mark, Kenny Smith, Pearl Washington, probably the top three in the city. But I would say from day one, Mark was the guy that we really zeroed in on. Jackson right now has more assists than either Kenny Smith or Pearl Washington on the year. As I got deeper and deeper into the process, I realized I didn't want to go somewhere else. I think in the back of his mind all along, he was going to stay in New York. I wanted to do it in the best place to do it, New York City. And I was honored to put on a St. John's basketball uniform. And God and behold, Mark said, I'm coming. And it's been the best thing that ever happened to us. He immediately bonded with his teammates, including the reigning Big East player of the year. And Mullen has the field. As soon as we signed Mark, he had us playing one-on-one -on -one almost every day. I was always a gym rat. I was in the gym working on my game, but Chris Mullen was a gym technician. Mark saw how hard this guy was working. After practice, on the weekends, late at night, Mark saw that and, and got into that mold. But Chris Mullen taught me how to be efficient on a basketball floor and it made me a better basketball player. We've learned through the past that when you push each other, that's when you come better. Arian Jackson with a great cut inside. But whatever minutes that he was afforded from right from the beginning were quality minutes. Mark Jackson, good move, and he got it in the lane. 
he was in the game usually when the game was on the line. Super play by Jackson. He's looking for some respect. He was never afraid to take the shot. Jackson spinning inside. And the basket's He took that shot and made it. Mark Jackson said it. He was a very confident young man. A huge basket by Mark Jackson. I think that comes with the equipment. As soon as he stepped on the floor, Jackson. he had an infectious energy. If anyone's going to get this club started, it's Mark. After being named to the Big East All-Rookie Team in 1984, Jackson would play a major role as St. John's sixth man in 85. I would say a sixth man, he played almost as a regular. Here's Jackson for St. John. When he came in the ball game, sometimes it went right up and we never went down. We kept things status quo, well, they got better. If anybody's gonna get this club started, it's Mark. As soon as he stepped on the floor, his presence would be felt. Jackson. He had an infectious energy. Jackson, Jackson! He was a glue. He was the type of guy that every team needed in order to win. My senior year, he came in the game. At the end, he got a dunk. I remember him hanging on the rim, yelling, ah! I'm looking at him, saying, I want to smack this little. But he had potential. He definitely believed in himself. After reaching the final four as a sophomore, Jackson took over as a junior, setting the NCAA single season assist record with 328. I really think that great passes and playmakers are born. What a pass! It's something innate. That was a big league pass. Because they see the play before they receive the ball. Most of us have to catch the ball and say, well, what are we gonna do? But Mark, before he got the ball, he had the next play going. Nice pass by Mark Jackson. You know, his specialty, of course, was the pass. The behind the back pass. The no-look pass. As a point guard, I'm all about making plays for someone else. Out to Mark Jackson. This is uncontested. I'm all about distributing the basketball, putting someone else in a position where they can prosper, where they can shine. John Wooden once said he felt secure when Mark Jackson had the ball. And he always said Mark Jackson's teams always got better. Jackson penetration move. And if that's good enough for John Wooden, that's good enough for me. In a Big East showdown game on February 2nd, 1987 against Georgetown, Jackson scored 34 points. And was the only man to play all 45 minutes in a 67-65 overtime win. Mark Jackson spinning inside. Coach Lou Carnesecca said it was the best performance he'd seen by a guard at St. John's. And it's over. In addition to being named Big East Defensive Player of the Year as a senior, Mark Jackson became the first in his family to graduate from college. Many athletes don't even finish their senior year academically. But he had promised his mother that he was going to get a degree on time. It was important to me for him to graduate as a student, not as an athlete. Because if you do not excel, what did you spend those four years doing? By the time he graduated, Madison Square Garden was familiar territory for Mark Jackson. And he arrived on draft day in 1987 with high hopes and lofty expectations. But as the hours passed and the draft went on, Jackson remained unselected. He was not the point guard deemed most likely to succeed. If I were gonna take a guard at this point, Tony White of Tennessee would be the guy that I would pick. And you can, you know, watch him fall in the draft and you can see his expression 
change. Well, if I were going to pick right now between Jackson and White, I'm going to make a lot of New York people upset because if they take him, but I would take Tony White. I went from a guy that was extremely confident to a guy that didn't have a clue what was going on. I just was a little frustrated. A silver lining began to emerge with the Knicks on the clock and the hometown crowd voicing its opinion. A lot of the people in the crowd are chanting, Mark Jackson. I turn around, I'm looking up in the balconies and looking up behind me, and I hear this, and I'm like, oh my god. For the 18th pick in the 1987 NBA draft. And now the only thing that stands in between me being selected by the Knicks is a microphone and somebody with brains. The New York Knickerbockers select Mark Jackson from St. Charles. Well, there he is, Mark Jackson, the guard from St. John's. Oh, my God. You know, they really do love him. They really do want him. And of course, they love it as he played right here in the New York area. What a greater thing to be a New York player than playing Madison Square Garden with the New York Knickerbockers. My son's going to play at home. That's a dream beyond. It's a dream come true. It's been a long love affair for myself in New York, and I'm just happy to be here. At the guards, number 13. I couldn't wait to prove those other 17 teams wrong. Mark Jackson, Mark Jackson, number 13. In his first NBA season, Jackson averaged more than 13 points and 10 assists per game. Once the Knicks got him, Ewing from Jackson. And day one, he and I just clicked. Steal by Wilkins, what a pass from Jackson. And helped lead the Knicks to their first playoff appearance in four years. His whole rookie year was a standout. Out of five, here's Jackson for the hoop, yes! Mark has an incredible rookie season. And there's little doubt as to who the Rookie of the Year is going to be. He made them pay. He sat there till 18, but then he kind of tortured people for the rest of his career. He was on a mission. He obviously was still a New Yorker, but he wanted to come back and beat the Knicks. In his second pro season, Mark Jackson was named an All-Star and helped lead the Knicks to their first Atlantic Division title since 1971. In round one of the playoffs, the Knicks beat the Sixers in three straight, and Jackson would celebrate the sweep with a flourish. And that will do it! The Knicks have swept the 76ers! He and his teammates Walked out on the court in Philadelphia, I'll never forget, with a broom. To say this is a dramatic statement is quite an understatement. That didn't go over well. He's a New York guy from the New York streets. Jackson from three, tough angle shot, he's got it! You don't excel on the playgrounds in New York City without having a little bit of flair to your game. And Mark Jackson with his third three-point field goal. A lot of people thought Mark was cocky. Mark wasn't cocky. Mark was motivating himself to go further. And I think it worked for him. If I tried to just play with no emotions, I would have never made it. Did he get carried away with his helicopter and airplane rides? Absolutely. But that was his New York flair, his New York savvy coming out. People have to understand where I came from. Waving your hand like this. Now, when did that start? People have to understand the odds that I beat. How do you do that? Is it just, just the way you do it? Not yeah. even close, John. <laughs> I couldn't help but to let everyone know. This is uncontested. I'm out there just trying to remember what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, and just stay on track. Jackson did remain on track, but in 1992, the Knicks organization decided it was time for a change. Mark is the centerpiece of that blockbuster trade with the Clippers in which he goes to L.A. and Charles Smith and Doc Rivers come to the Knicks. I was very surprised when I was traded, but I understood the mindset of management. Now, would I have made the trade? Absolutely not. As a reliable floor leader, Jackson's talents were coveted throughout the league. Two things that are the hardest to find in the NBA is a dominant big man and a smart 
well-versed point guard. Jackson beautifully in the lane. And that's why you kept seeing Mark Jackson pop up on the other teams. Number 13, Mark Jackson. And almost every team that he went to, his impact was immediate. And therefore, his absence was felt. He was retraded for by the Pacers. Jackson takes it all the way and lays it in. As soon as he brought him back, they started winning games. His role was so instrumental in their rise to the near top of the NBA. Jackson Alley, up pass, and Dale Davis puts it in. Here was Mark Jackson giving the ball to Reggie Miller. Miller, a wide open three. He got the ball to him. He knew the ball was going to go away. In his second stint with Indiana, leaves inside and gets the roll. Jackson found himself in the middle of a perennial playoff rivalry against none other than the New York Knicks. Boy, he saved his best for New York. When Mark faced the Knicks in the playoffs, he had to think that somewhere in his mind, somewhere in his heart, he was wanting to get back a little bit for having been traded. There's nothing like going against somebody that you have something to prove against. Jackson ties the game with 41. He was on a mission. He obviously was still a New Yorker, but he wanted to come back and beat the Knicks. Frustrating as hell to, to, to play against him and just not be able to stop him. Jackson with the first triple double in Pacer playoff history. When he had an opening, when he had an advantage, he took full advantage. I really enjoyed playing against the Knicks. It's an old class here. Jackson very quietly walked over and hooked Charlie Ward. I'm a New York City guy that was fully understanding of the moment, of just how precious it was. So it was special for me to defeat them. When he told me he was coming back to New York, I was like, oh my God. And here comes Jackson. And the guard is going to give him a standing ovation. I mean, you know, he did play for Indiana, the Clippers, Utah even. But when you think of Mark Jackson, you think of him in that Knicks uniform. Jackson was back in a Knicks uniform in 2001 after a midseason trade brought him home to the Garden. When I got the phone call, I just stood still for a second. And I soaked it in. When he told me he was coming back to New York, I was like, oh my god. To be back in a Knicks uniform, to a place where I had accomplished so much. It was an incredible thing for me. Here comes Jackson, and the guard is going to give him a standing ovation. That moment that they gave him the standing ovation in the garden was the most amazing moment of Mark's life. And a big roar from the crowd. It showed appreciation. It showed love. It showed that the underdog rose up again. At the end of the following season, Jackson scored his 12,000th point to cap off a memorable return to New York. He next suited up for the Utah Jazz, where he reached another milestone, his 10,000th assist. Martin Jackson has got his 10,000th assist. It's one of those double-double combinations that shows you just how good this guy was. <laughs> Ten thousand assists. Just shake your head. Over ten thousand assists in his career says a heck of a lot about a guy who brought his talent to a different level because of a belief in himself. Mark Jackson was a basketball player first and an athlete second. All he focused on was getting the ball to the guy who had the best shot. Jackson quietly playing a key role with his distribution. Whether he was on the playground, whether he was at St. John's or the Knicks, that's the type of guard he was. Oh, what a pass from Jackson! Yes! Oh, oh, oh. Jackson's unselfishness and longevity allowed him to exceed all expectations and finish his career with the second most assists in the history of the NBA. 
over the right corner, Cheney. The shot. Move over. Move over. Magic Johnson. Passing Magic Johnson on the assist list. I couldn't help but to get choked up. There's a new man, number two in assists in the history of the NBA, Mark Jackson. To move past him was absolutely incredible to me. I mean, when you think about all the great point guards that came out. Wearing number 13 from St. John's. He's number two in assists. Mark Jackson. Unheard of. I was beating the odds every time I stepped on the floor. Jackson. The fact that you're ahead of guys like Magic Johnson, Oscar Robertson, Isaiah Thomas, I think anyone can relate to that. Jackson did it. It's always been I was too slow. He's not the fastest. I couldn't defend. He's not the best defender. But if you blow the whistle and you throw the ball up in the air, For Jackson, look out. I am going to find a way to get it done. Today, he's getting it done with a microphone. 10 years, 10 times all NBA on both sides of the floor. He brings that serious approach to broadcasting. There's a difference between moments of greatness and being consistently great. The Mark Jackson you get on the air is the Mark Jackson you would get if you were just playing ball with him. His number 13 jersey was retired by St. John's in 2006 and hangs from the rafters as a tribute to his legendary career. It's a tremendous honor because I know the history of the people that came before me. I'm able to take my kids and just have them look up. I'll get teary-eyed because I'll remember every single moment in order to be hanging up there. Who would have thought that my son would have a 17-year career? We didn't know he could do it. We didn't believe he could do it. We still don't believe it. Who would have thought that my son would have been Rookie of the Year. But numbers don't lie. Jackson, oh, what a move. Who would have thought that my son would have been an All-Star? Jackson, yeah. Still to this day, I'll go play basketball in the park or on the court. People will still look at me like they can take me. And it's all right, because they're not the first. Jackson of the one-on-one -on -one move hits. They won't be the last, but do know that I've beaten the odds.